basically yesterday I had a thought that I wanted to sit down and tell you guys about the frustrations I'm having with myself personally. I have nobody to blame for the way that I'm feeling except myself because I cannot seem to get a grip on life since we have been in this temporary housing. And it is affecting me in such a way that affects my work. And that's where you guys come in. And so I just kind of wanted to sit down and I wanted to rant about it, vent about it. I don't quite know the right words, but I wanted to kind of explain to you guys what I'm going through because that's what this channel is. This channel is me sharing my experiences and my life with you guys in the hopes that it can help and encourage or educate you in some way to help you get through yours. If you are new here and have absolutely no idea why I might be in such a wah headspace right now, hello, my name is Brianna. I am the diva behind Diva and the Divine, and welcome to my little place on the internet. My channel is a place where I strive to inspire and positively impact every person who comes across my channel in some way, shape, or form, and I'm hoping I can do that for you today. My husband and I have recently relocated to Minneapolis from Chicago, and I'm currently sitting here here in what is our temporary housing and this might be the last video you actually see with this background because we close on our new home tomorrow. Yes, the day that I'm filming this is Thursday. We close on Friday. I'm so excited and I actually believe that the act of getting this house is going to solve a lot of the problems that I'm going to talk about in this video, but there's still problems that are worth talking about nonetheless. So I've basically been frustrated with myself because I can't seem to figure out how to get motivated, get inspired, and get disciplined. That's really the thing. Motivation is fleeting, and I know this, I preach this, and yet somehow I'm sitting here in this temporary housing trying to find the motivation to go and get the things done that I need to get done, when I know for a fact that motivation is not the thing that's going to get me where I want to go. And that's why I'm in sort of this weird headspace of I don't really want to do anything. That's what it boils down to. I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I don't freaking want to do anything. Do I get this stuff done? Most of the time, but could I be exponentially more efficient and productive with my time? 110%. I am just in this weird place of procrastination reigns, picking up the phone and doing something else with my phone reigns, the desire to sit down and film is non-existent, the desire to sit down and vlog is completely non-existent, and outside of my weekly live streams that have been happening on Tuesday nights, I have been in completely inconsistent with pretty much everything I've been doing, and it has been impacting me physically and emotionally and mentally, and it's starting to make me crazy. Now, I do actually find it to be a blessing saying that I've finally like hit my threshold at the exact same time that life is just going to kind of get spun upside down one more time and we're going to be doing the process of actually moving into our house. So it's actually the perfect time for me to kind of spontaneously combust and be like, I have had enough of this. I need to figure out how to get my crap together and I am going to do it. So that is actually a blessing because I feel like this big transitional time is exactly what I need to kind of get back in the swing of things. And I know what my problem is. Do you guys ever have that feeling of like, if you know you're on vacation, you feel like something doesn't count, or if you know you're in a temporary season, you feel like that doesn't count or that's not real life, that's kind of what I have been feeling right now. We have been in Minneapolis for over a month now, but because we are in temporary housing and in my brain, I know it's temporary. This is not my permanent residence. This is not the place that I am calling home. This is kind of like a, a bigger hotel is what it is. And I'm just here for the time being waiting for my real life to start. And that has really started to impact me mentally and it impacts the way I'm approaching life, which is absolutely ridiculous. My husband is getting up and going to work every day like he's supposed to because this is his new life now. And he can somehow compartmentalize the fact that we are in this temporary living situation, but the, the, the location situation is very much permanent reality for us, if that makes any sense at all. Maybe it's the way that males can compartmentalize things better than females. You know how men have like these, there's this theory that men have these little boxes in their brains and they can actually like pick 
which boxes open and which boxes to put away and pull out later, whereas women don't have those boxes. It's all in the one room all at once. That's kind of what's happening here, I think. My husband has adapted very, very well, and I have not. And it's not that I'm not happy to be here. I know at the beginning of this whole process, back when I was still in Chicago, I was very sad about it. It was a very depressing thing. It's not that. I'm actually very pleased to be here and I'm ecstatic about going to this new house and getting life started. It's just this weird limbo. I hate being in limbo. And I've spent a lot of my marriage in limbo because of my husband's different working situations. And it's just been one of those things like maybe this is it. Maybe I'm, I'm looking at the finish line of something that feels more permanent and that is exciting. But in the meantime, I have not been dealing with it well. As I mentioned earlier, some of the examples of this are my inability to want to sit and film. At this moment, it is 4.53 p.m. I wanted to have this video filmed before noon today. And I'm just now sitting down to do this video that I'm completely and utterly unprepared for other than the random monologue happening in my head as we speak. But that's just how it has been. I've been getting up in the morning at the same time, 7.30 every morning, and I want to push it to earlier, but I can't seem to do it. That's another thing. There's all these things that I'm sitting here going, I can't do it. I don't know why, but I can't do it. And the frustrating part about this is that whole quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And I'm sitting here saying I can't do things. I can't get myself up. I can't get myself motivated to get up and moving and inspired to actually keep going forward and get the workout done first thing in the morning. I, I've been doing two part workouts. I have been working out, so that's a bonus. I have been tracking what I've been eating, so that's on the positive side. I have been doing all these things, but I feel like I'm dragging my feet through the mud while I'm doing it. Instead of being able to get up, get changed, get going and get the day started, I lag and everything that could happen in a matter of a couple of hours literally takes me all day and I have no one to blame but myself. And it's infuriating and I'm tired of it. I'm currently in the middle of reading this book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, I think his name is. And it, this book has been eye-opening and I think it has enlightened me as to why I'm struggling with this situation. If you haven't picked up Atomic Habits, I highly recommend it. I will have it linked down below and I'm certain it is something that's going to come up in future videos because the information in it is just so wonderful and so practical that it will be applied to my life as I'm moving forward and thus it'll be information I wanna to convey to you as well. One of the points that the book says, and I have talked about this on my live stream, I think it was, or in one of my vlogs, I can't remember, but the concept of when you're trying to build habits, you wanna make things as easy as humanly possible and environments really, really help with that. And so it's very helpful if you have different habits that you want to achieve to have a different place in a different environment for each of them. For example, you work in your office, you only use your bed for sleeping and sex. No, no phone scrolling, no TV watching, no nothing, because then your body knows when it goes to bed that sleep is supposed to happen. Maybe you have a specific chair that's just for journaling in your morning routine or reading your book. But you know how you have different modes that you're in based on your location? Some people get up and go to work. Some people have a home office, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where you go to get whatever the thing is done. You go to the gym, you get the workout. Where we were living in Chicago, I had my home office where I could go in there and be like, okay, it's work mode. Now, did I use it for a couple of other things as well? Yes, but generally speaking, I knew if I was in that room, that's what I was doing. I knew that if I was at the Y, I was working out and I had a very regimented schedule and all of that had just been blown up by the fact that I'm in a little one bedroom apartment, which is super cute and I actually really love it. It's, it's adorable, but it's completely not functional for what I need it to be because this space that I'm sitting in right now is my workspace and my reading space and my good morning journaling, start today journal space and my TV watching space with my husband and where we eat dinner. It's everything. This space is everything. And when I sit here, I'm like, oh, look, a phone. And I can pretend it's chill time, no problem, even though it's work time, or even though it's reading time, or even though it's whatever time. You know what I'm saying? And so it's so easy for all of those lines to just get blurred for me, and just I end up like imploding and doing nothing instead. I'm one of those people like when I get overwhelmed or the thoughts happen too often and the brain starts to go like this, I just shut off entirely. I don't, I am an Enneagram nine. I don't know if that's an Enneagram nine characteristic or an Enneagram one characteristic. I am an Enneagram nine 
wing one, if you guys know what that means. I'm also an obliger in Gretchen Rubin's four tendencies and the obligers need external accountability. And I have left all of the systems that I had in place and have none currently which is awesome for me, <laughs> except for my live stream because I have you guys for my live stream to keep me accountable because I have to show up for you guys in real time. And that's the one thing that I have been able to do consistently. Isn't it fascinating how stuff like that works? Like we're actually like the personality tests and characterizations and everything are spot on. It's kind of crazy, but I digress. So what am I going to do about this struggle? Well, first I'm going to embrace the fresh start of getting this new house. I'm very excited about it. We will have more space than we did in Chicago. I will have a brand new office that I get to design exactly how I want it, which will be Diva and the Divine HQ. And I am stoked which helps me get to my next point. I want to make sure that I can jump in with both feet because I like to jump in with both feet. I have all of these plans. I have all of these things that I want to do and I want to do them all immediately. Is anyone else like that? Are you one of those people that's like, no, step by step, one thing at a time, or you're all in? I'm the all in type of person. So here's my plan for getting myself out of this funk, this rut, this frustrating lifestyle that I'm in. One, I'm going to set my alarm every single day for earlier than I think I need to set it. I've been getting up at 7.30 in the morning primarily because that's when my husband leaves for work and neither my husband or I really like to interact with people in the morning. Like we all, it's not that we don't like to interact with people, but it's that we like quiet more. And like the first thing in the morning, I like to get up and just have it be quiet. And in this little space, we are crossing paths all the time. So I have been sleeping until he leaves so I can get up and have my quiet time. He's up and having his quiet time and we're not interfering with each other. And I think I'm using that as an excuse and I don't have time for excuses anymore. So I'm going to start setting my alarm even though we're moving into the house soon. We still have a couple of days before our stuff gets delivered so we might still be in this place. Starting tomorrow, my friends, my alarm is getting set for early. I'm getting up and I'm doing it regardless of if my husband is home or not. I find that the earlier I start, the more I get accomplished first thing. Another thing that I'm thinking about implementing is a cell phone free morning. How many of you do this? Because the first thing I do, I swear to you, the first thing I do, sometimes it actually is what wakes me up is I grab my phone and I'll immediately open Instagram or something. So I'm re like, I'm looking at something and that's what wakes me up. All of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm taking in information. I'm taking in lights. My brain's awake, okay, let's go. Sometimes that's how I end up waking up in the morning. But once I'm out of bed, I need to like pop on do not disturb, leave the phone on the nightstand and just do things without the phone. So I'm going to actually make that one of my habits that I do every single day and see if that transforms my morning. Speaking of habits, thing number three that I'm going to do to help myself get out of this frustrating loop that I have myself in is to set routines and habits that need to happen every single day. My goal is to have a morning routine that is solid. My goal is to have an evening routine that is solid and sets me up for the next morning. That is my goal. And I have a couple of ideas. I won't present them to you until I have my routines solidified, but trust me, you will hear about them. But I think the combination of these three things, getting up earlier, getting rid of my phone and having these morning and evening routines set will really help me jump in full force. And then the other thing that I want to do, and this is exclusively for work, I have all sorts of things like home stuff and physical stuff and all that stuff. And I'm working on that. But I want to talk to you guys about Diva and the Divine stuff. I want to know simply, how can I serve you better? What kind of content do you want to see going forward? I'm really excited about the idea of being able to bring a home organization content to you, of being able to bring moving content to you, how I set up this new office, how I set up this new kitchen, tips for how to move or how to organize or how to whatever. I have all of these ideas in my head, but my friends, I need to know what you guys want from me. My job here is to serve you. So please, in the comments below, tell me how I can best do that for you. Really, truly, no topic is off limits. I know that I'm primarily a weight loss related channel, 
But I, like all of you, are we are so much more than just weight loss. That is not what we are. That is something that we are working on. But I am a housewife. I am a Christian. I am a music theater nerd. I am a singer. I am a dog mom. I am so many things. And I want to be able to start to express different areas of my life to you. But I want to know what you guys want. So in order for me to best serve you, I need to know what I can do for you. So it would be a huge favor to me if you could tell me either in the comments below or if you don't want to leave a comment with your name on it, feel free to email me, divainthedivine at gmail.com and let me know what you would like to see from me. Do you want to see more vlogs? Do you want to see vlogs that are just what I ate? Do you want to see vlogs that have nothing to do with what I ate and just a day in my housewife life? As I said, nothing is off limits and I will take most topics into consideration. That being said, don't be dumb and think before you submit a request to me because there are some things that will obviously be off limits for one reason or another. But in general, you guys know I am an open book and I am here to serve you. So on that note, thank you for listening to my rant. I hope this helped somebody feel at least not so alone. If you are going through this sort of chaotic, frustrated with yourself, not sure how to get motivated and back into a groove that's actually going to help you accomplish your goals, you are not alone. I am right there with you. I'm also trying to brainstorm some ideas for you and I to be able to work more closely together if that is something you're interested in. Kind of like a mentorship program. I'm thinking of launching something in the new year, but before that, I'm thinking of launching a little program that might be able to help us skyrocket and finish the decade, the decade, strong with some sort of membership program that might have different tiers. Maybe you get access to a couple of PDF workbook type things that I've been working on, or maybe you want the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one Skype phone call with me so we can sit down together and really talk about your goals and create an action plan and have me be your accountability partner. Something like this would be a paid sort of situation with like this mentorship program or something. So I honestly want to know, is this worth my time to pursue? Would you guys be interested in some sort of mentorship program? where you work with me directly and get access to exclusive content, maybe some sort of workbook type things, an exclusive group and one-on-one -on -one time with me. Let me know, honestly, let me know. I will not be offended if you say no, I promise. But I'm working on all of these things. I have these thoughts kind of floating around in my head, but much like this video, I can't figure out how to verbalize them in a way that puts them into actionable plans. So I need your guys' help. Thank you for listening to my rant. I'm just gonna leave it here. Like I said, this might be the last video you see in temporary housing, and very soon I will hopefully have Diva and the Divine HQ up and running, and hopefully we'll be in a better and more clear headspace. But in the meantime, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for being patient with me, and I will see you guys very, very soon. Mwah. Bye.